This is Eugene Panrutkovich. I'm the Laptop Screen Doc, and the name of the website is www.screensurgeons.com. Today we have an Acer Aspire 1 756 netbook with a cracked screen, and I'm going to show you how to replace a cracked screen on an Acer Aspire 1 756 netbook. Before we do anything with this or any other laptop computer, we need to make it safe to work on, and that means removing all sources of power. In order to do that, we have to remove the battery on the bottom. And in order to do that, there's a lever that you slide on the bottom, right above the battery. You can either use your fingertip to reach in the little opening, or you can use a screwdriver to reach in and pull the lever to the left. Actually, we're gonna use a screwdriver to pull the lever to the left, and to slide the battery out. So let's try it again. I had a little bit of trouble first time. Use fingers to pull the lever to the left and slide the battery out. Okay, while we're still on the bottom, I'm going to show you how to find the part number for this laptop because it's not written on the top. There's a white label on the bottom and at the top left hand corner it says Acer Aspire 1 756-2623 we just need the 756 because all the model variations use the same screen okay once we remove the battery and the laptop is safe to work on we look at the top again and we see that we need to remove the plastic frame around the screen or the screen bezel in order to get to the screen assembly itself. Before I start to do that, I will go over the tools we're going to use. We have a PH1 electronics screwdriver. PH stands for Phillips and one is the size. We also have a smaller PH00 electronic screwdriver for smaller screws. A flat, a flathead two millimeter screwdriver, and that's mainly to pry things open. A pair of metal tweezers to remove any screws that may be stuck. And an X-Acto knife or a hobby knife. We most likely will not use it for this laptop because there's no screw covers to take off on the top of the screen assembly, the bezel, because there's no screws. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is snap off the screen bezel. And what you want to do is put your fingernails or fingertips on the screen side and gently start lifting up. Some, for this case, in this case, there's some adhesive that secures the screen bezel to the screen assembly. So we use the flathead screwdriver to reach in to gain a hold with our fingernail and gently start lifting up like this. And then we go around the screen assembly doing that. So find a finger hold somewhere. And Listen for snapping sounds, and once you hear snapping sounds, that's a good sign. And the bezel is coming off, so you go around the whole screen assembly. And if you find you're stuck at a place, what I did in this corner is I lift it up and push outwards, and it comes off like so. So if you find you're stuck at a place, just go to a different place and come back to that place later on. So. On the bottom, we do the same thing. We gently move the screen assembly forward until it starts snapping off. And once we reach that limit, we have to remove the screw cover, I mean the hinge covers also, or pry up, pry up the hinge covers. And for that, what I do is I take the two millimeter flathead screwdriver and gently reach under, reach under the hinge covers and I hear a snapping sounds, sound, that means it snapped off. We do that for both. And we keep working it and it's almost off and it's just stuck at this one corner. And in this case, what I can do is 
reach in with a two millimeter flathead screwdriver and snap it off and finally it comes off. So just take your time on this step. This is the hardest step of the whole procedure and eventually it will come off and you have some tools to help you with. Okay, once we remove the screen cover, we see the screen assembly and for this type of screen, it's called a slim screen, it's mounted by some metal tabs on top and bottom so we have to remove four screws. And we're going to start with our PH1 screwdriver, see if that works, and that does work. If it's too big, we would have used our PH00 screwdriver. And we remove the screws one by one while having the screen tilted back a little bit so that when we remove all the screws, the screen doesn't fall forward on you. Like so. Keep moving around. Okay, once we remove all four screws, we gently tilt the screen assembly forward. Make sure nothing is catching. And we gently tilt it forward. And we lay it down. Okay, when, we, when I laid it down, I saw that there's some adhesive tape coming to the front of the screen. So we use our fingernail, or if you want the knife, to remove the adhesive tape and then we can put the screen down. Okay, for this type of screen there's only one connector and that's at the bottom and it's secured by some plastic tape on top. So we use our fingernail or if you want you can try the X-Acto knife to lift up the tape. It's pretty tight so take your time on it. eventually it comes off. So gently lift it up, being careful not to damage the connector underneath. Like so, keep lifting it up until the connector is exposed. Once the connector is exposed, you want to pull the connector backward until it's released and we see that the video cable has some adhesive tape that secures it to the screen and we gently remove this adhesive tape and the screen is free. Okay, before we go any further I'm going to show you how to reconnect this connector because that's the biggest source of problems that I see when people do this at home. So when you slide the connector in, make sure you'll feel two clicks. That means it's properly engaged. And let's take a look at the close-up of the connector. If we can get a good focus. There we go. You see that there's no gap in the seam between the two sides of the connection. The two sides of the connection are flush with each other. So pause the video right there and make sure your connection looks like that when you reconnect it. Alright, let's keep moving. We slide out the connector again and we take a look at this screen. The part number that you're looking up is N116BGE-L41. Now normally the number after your dash is not important, but in this case it is important and I'll explain why in a little while. N116BGE-L41. Okay, so it's a, this is a 11.6 inch LED slim screen. Now the standard screen that's this profile has the mounting brackets on the sides. Acer netbooks use mount the same screen with the mounting brackets on top and bottom. So that's what the dash L41 stands for. So when you do order your screen, make sure that you order the one that has the mounting brackets on top and bottom rather than on the sides because the one on the sides is the most common, more common variation of this screen. 
Okay, uh, we at Screen Surgeons also sell this screen, and we have this particular screen type in stock with the mounting brackets on top and bottom. We also have a compatibility guarantee. If the screen we ship you is not compatible, we'll replace it with the right one. Also, we have a two-year warranty on our screens and free email technical support. So if you have problems with your screen, send us email and then we'll help you out along the way. With this screen, you also get this toolkit for free at no charge with the screen and we have fast shipping. We ship either by priority mail or from our warehouses on the East Coast or East Coast and West Coast so you get your screen in three days or less when using ground shipping. Okay, so when you do get your screen in, again, you uh, plug in the connector as I showed you, uh, reattach the tapes, adhesive tapes to the screen as before, mount the screen on the back of the screen assembly, secure, put the four screws in, snap the screen bezel back on and you should be done and that's it and I know you'll be good to go so that's it good luck and thank you very much and once again my name is Eugene Panrikovich I'm the laptop screen doc and the name of the website is www.screensurgeons.com